can set us free. Prophecies and lies, a very, very important topic that concerns the church today. Um, we're going to start by, um, I'm going to start by thanking Reverend Yomi Kasali for allowing me to invade his Instagram face. I'm Thank very, you. very honored, sir. I know I'm a small, small girl, no, you're so not. you're coming to give me space. No, so not. I want the anointing to rub off on me a little bit, and no, then by the time I leave this place, I don't want to be a pastor, but at least I would have grabbed something <laughs> by God's grace. So today we'll be doing prophecies and lies, sir, and yes. I know that you are ready for and you have studied extensively to be able to give the people of God the answers that yes. is pressing on their mind yes. currently at this point yes. in time. And then we're just going to briefly start building a foundation of the basics. What is prophecy? A lot of people say, I had a prophecy, I have a prophecy. Are they really getting prophecy? Is it prophecy that they really hear? Or are they just hearing the thoughts of men? Because that's, there's a big difference between it. So what exactly is prophecy? Let's okay. start with that. Okay. This is very important. Now, prophecy yes, from biblical um, angle simply means a foretelling to okay. speak about the future with okay. accuracy and precision. Okay. In other words, something that's going to happen 10 years, 15 years, 20, maybe 30, maybe 10 months, maybe two months, somebody speaks to you or reveals it. It's a revelation of the future, okay. something that will happen in the, in the nearest future. So that, that is prophecy, because mm -hmm. we know that God knows tomorrow, mm -hmm. God owns tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, the method of God revealing tomorrow to man is called prophecy. So mm -hmm. that, that method of God telling you about tomorrow is called prophecy. So mm -hmm. the prophets prophesy. So that's what prophecy is in a nutshell. Okay. All right, sir. I, I hear that, but you know, We've heard that, okay, it's a gift for, I've, no, I've read my Bible, it's a gift for the edification of the church. So is it principally just for those of us in the church, or is it for everybody? Now, there is foretelling, okay. and there is forth I was coming to that, sir. What's the difference? I tell you. Okay. There are many prophetic verses. Now, what you are speaking about is um, prophetic statements. Okay. That, that is for edification of the church. That's what 1 Corinthians 14 tells us. That's mm -hmm. different from prophecy as we speak today with respect to revealing the future. And again, both of them, to speak forth and to speak forth, oh. F-O-R-E, ahead of time. To speak forth is, could be to instruct you, to rebuke you, to edify you, to correct you um, during a service, during a meeting, to tell somebody this is what God is saying. Now, those, those that can happen with any child of God who's anointed uh, we call those ones prophetic vessels. Okay. You know, people that can give prophetic statements at, at, at every now and then. But then, they are different from those we call prophets or those that occupy and operate under the anointing of a five-fold ministry of a prophet. So there's a difference yes. between the office of the prophet yes. and people that just have the gift of prophecy. Absolutely. Because again, uh, that, that's very correct. Again, if you see in 1 Corinthians 12, mm -hmm. it tells us there are nine gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. we, we have them categorized as three different categories. The utterance gifts, the revelation, revelation gifts, gifs, exactly. Revelation. And the utterance gifts are the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now, that is given to men, a child of God, children of God, anywhere. God does anoint you momentarily in a service. You may even just prophesy once in ten years. And you feel and sense God's, God's grace upon you. You have an utterance, mm -hmm. an unction. You move out, depends on the church, mm -hmm. and you then become, at that moment, a prophetic vessel. Now, that well, you're not in the office of the prophet. God bless you. You're not in the office of a prophet. So what exactly? The office of a prophet is more superior. That, that's, you see, in the Old Testament, which the, uh, is, is where the New Testament picks its own um, ideas from, mm -hmm. we have the seers, we have sons of the prophets, the seers, mm -hmm. and the prophets. If you remember in 2 Kings chapter 2, some 50 sons of prophets told Elisha, do you know today the Lord will take your master from you? Those guys were like prophetic vessels. Mm. They could tell and they could sense that something's mm. going to happen. But they were not really prophets in maturity. They were not functioning in the office of a prophet. Elijah was, and Elisha took his mantle from him. And seers, which is where people, people there were visions, visions. There were seers are those that see things. Mm. They see through visions and revelations, and they now utter or prophesy what they've seen. What they see. So those ones two are the superior office of a prophet. Okay. But, but today in church, the gift of uh, uh, a prophecy 
It's like the gift of faith, a gift of, yeah, of knowledge, yeah, one of yeah. wisdom, um, you know, the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, gift of uh, miracles and gift of healings. healings yeah. There are the 12, 12 gifts of the Spirit that is given to church, to every man, and it is the one that would inspire them to operate in those gifts. Now, the prophetic vessels are different from the prophet. In Acts 21, there's a, there's a guy, his name was Philip. He yeah. was one of the first seven deacons. Mm -hmm. You know, he had four daughters. Yeah, and the Bible says they all prophesied. So, yes. But then a prophet who operated in the office of a prophet, Agabus, came to that house, picked up Saul's girdle, mm -hmm. and tied himself as a boss here, the Lord. This will happen to the man that owns this girdle. Mm -hmm. Now, those people could, during services, you know, operate in the gift of prophecy, which is momentarily, which is temporarily. Just for a service to edify the church, maybe things are going on mm -hmm. to comfort them for comfort, mm -hmm. for edification. I mean, maybe maybe there's a depression in the economy. Somebody now comes out and says, Thus said the Lord, I will keep you, I will hold you together. Do not fret, do not fear. Now I'm speaking forth, encouraging you, comforting you. I've not predicted or mm -hmm. prophesied the precisely the future. Exactly. I've not revealed anything that will happen in the future to you. to you, but I've just encouraged you, I've comforted you, and I've edified you through the prophetic so, means. could those two work together, meaning that you could actually encourage, edify, which is what they say, oh, yeah. perhaps it's for exhortation, for education, oh, yeah. for comfort, yeah. and then you could also foretell of what exactly, somebody can work in everything together. Oh, only prophets foretell, only prophets, and, and the truth is God still has prophets in town. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, many of us don't know that. God still reveals the future to people. Amos 3, 7, God says, I will not do anything on earth mm -hmm. without revealing to my servant, the prophet. You know, in the five-fold ministry, we have apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. That are the five-fold ministries, yes, Ephesians sure. 4, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Now, they have different grace. People have graces to stand and operate in those offices. And so, the fact that I, 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 have, a, I have a prophetic gift or I prophesy in church, mm -hmm does not make me a prophet. prophet However, prophets do not also just see into the future as God reveals to man. And the way you know a prophet is the, the things they say happen. happen. Most often than not, they happen. They will tell you what's going to happen in 10 years from now. They will tell you it's going to be an election in 2023. They will tell you what God showed them will happen in two years from now or maybe 10 years from now. And that's the gift of, of the office, rather the office of a prophet that's stronger and that's a five-fold ministry. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, according to uh, most scholars, we believe that it's next to the apostolic. Oh, oh yeah. The apostolic is a father, is, mm. is a government, is mm -hmm. a leader of the five. The apostolic office is a leader of the five. We believe that the prophetic is next to it. It's next to it. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to ask now, because, you know, one story always comes to my mind, scripturally, of the story of when um, God told the prophet to go and prophesy against the altar that yeah. they just built. Yeah. And then he met an older prophet. Yeah who was supposed to be a prophet. Yeah. And he says, oh, no, you know, because the prophets had received direct instructions yeah. from God. Yeah. Do not pause, do not eat, yeah. do not anything, yeah. go back. Yeah. And then another prophet comes and yeah. he tells you, ah, oh, God has spoken to me, yeah. the old prophet, yeah. as the scripture calls him. Yeah. And he has told me that you should follow me home. Yeah. And then he gets to his house, he eats a <laughs> against the instruction. Do we really blame this young prophet? Because the guy, eventually, the Bible prophesied again that does yet the Lord. So, now, in the right spirit of prophecy, can, I, I, you, I can you lose the gift of prophecy, so to speak? Because is it that the old prophet had lost the gift and God just because he wanted to, you know, is it something you can lose? Can, because he was prophesying before, can a prophet get it wrong? Oh, yeah. Prophets do get it wrong. When our egos come in at work, Prophets have big egos. Frankly. So we have to realize there are treasures in earthen vessels. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Prophets have very big egos. Very big egos. And that's what happened to Jonah. Mm -hmm. That was why Jonah was upset with God. He said, God, I ain't going to go out. I will not go and prophesy to Nineveh. Because I know you. You will forgive you them. Pressure. But that's God's prerogative. Only the truth can set us free. Same with that old prophet. What mm -hmm. happened was that that old prophet in town, in 1 Kings 13, felt so bruised. You mean somebody will come to I tell a prophecy on the altar and God will not tell me? Because prophets don't know all things. God usually will choose his own prophets to declare certain things. Maybe for whatever reason, mm -hmm. this old prophet had some sentiments of sympathy for the king, the Jeroboam, king Jeroboam. Maybe. So he couldn't hear God with respect to that king. He lied. The Bible said that was in that same 1 Kings 13. 
when he told him that an angel appeared to him, mm -hmm. you will recall he said, an angel told me. He didn't say God. He said, an angel told me mm. that you should come home with me and eat at home with me. An angel, an angel. And he lied. Now, the fact that he lied was what Abu says was a, he was a lying prophet. Listen to me. So many prophets that lie do not make them false prophets. I, I, did, I talked on it many years ago in church. The difference between a false prophet and a lying prophet is that this lying prophet could really be a child of God who missed it, whose lying was in a while. But it's still a child of God. So they are the prophetic. Mm -hmm. But a false prophet mm. leads men to idolatry. Speaks so, for Baal, Ashtaroth, mm. not for Jehovah. In the Old Testament, false prophets lead men into, Straight into idolatry. Exactly. Not so they are leading God. you away from God. Absolutely. In this, uh, Absolutely. That's what mm -hmm. Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. He said, if you see a man that comes to town, he says to you, and his prophecies come to pass. Yeah. And thereafter tells you to follow idols. He cast him out. He's a false prophet. Because he's having a false god. So that means that people should be more careful. It's oh, not yes. even if someone prophesies to Absolutely. you and it comes to pass. Oh, yes. You have to be more centered what on the end? fruits. What are the fruits of this person? Yeah. Some other things are the things. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's go to our next question. How will you discern? Or how will you know someone is a false prophet? Given, for example, to be practical, I remember when I was in university, 200 level, and I had this guy, he was supposed to be a pastor, and he came to me, God told him I was going to marry him, I was going to, he heard from God, it was almost like he was giving a prophecy, and I was disturbed. I was a young teenager, and I was like, God, I cannot marry this person. But the thing did not give me peace. I was troubled, and I was afraid, and I said, God will not do something that will cause so much fear. Yeah. So how do we really discern? Because people are going through Walking with false prophets, how will you know someone is a false prophet? You said it. Sorry, sir, just before you answer, you could send in your questions now. If you have any questions that are very key that you would like um, Reverend to answer, please send in. We'll take your questions very, very soon. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, you said it all. Mm -hmm. One of the ways you know and discern false prophets, number one, fear. God's word will not create fear. It creates faith. Number two, idolatry. Mm. Anything that... Even if they prophesy according to Deuteronomy 13 and it comes to pass, yes. and the end thereof is not God, God, but idolatry, which means worship of mammon, worship of materialism, anything else. I mean, this can be God. So they are leading you or misleading you to worship idols and not God. Those are the ways to discern the end of each prophecy mm. matters, not what is said, but exactly. why it is said. And that's how you know and discern if this is from God or not from God. But let's go back to that old prophet and young prophet. Mm -hmm. You will recall that same old prophet, God used him in the same house yes. to say, thus saith the Lord, because you have disobeyed God, mm -hmm. the same person that God now spoke through him, not an angel, and he gave him his final right. He said, you are going to be eaten up by a lion on your way. And, then, and that, it happened to the young prophet. So the young prophet, my opinion, um, got, got swayed of his feet, with um, this big man of God that came to meet him. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the older prophet uh, got his egos bruised with this young prophet that came to that town. Came to town. And, like, and just came to prophesy my territory mm -hmm. without coming to pay obeisance to me. Mm -hmm. I, 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 how come God will choose you in this? While I'm city. still right here. I'm still here. I'm alive. Like, exactly, I'm not here exactly. gone. So prophets need to be very careful. They have massive ego. They have big egos and people need to... Because again, when, you, when God speaks to you and you declare it, you want God to do it. So you, you begin to play the role of God. So yes. should God have mercy or should God change his mind? And he, in scriptures, it's not very often that God will change his mind, frankly. Um, especially when it comes to predictive uh, prophecies. And I have to say this quickly. Uh, there's a difference between predictions and prophecies. Okay. That's, and I have to say that quickly because people do not know mm -hmm. the difference. Uh, I can predict a woman that's three months pregnant, that in nine months she'll put to bed. That's just <laughs> the way God has made it. Uh, exactly. It's not a prophecy. Uh, exactly. That's not a prophecy. It's not a prophecy, right? Exactly. So it, it can't be a prophecy. If I say, oh, you're going to put to bed in six, six months. I'm three months pregnant. So I'm sure about that period I'll put to bed. Um, uh, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 16. He said, when you predict weather, so you can look at the sky and say it will rain today. Rain today. That's not prophecy. That's predictions. And so people don't know the difference between predictions and prophecies. And sometimes those that run churches try to predict things. And then mm -hmm. we say it's prophecy. For instance, if I go to my pulpit and I say to them, oh, this year 
uh, run a church of 10,000 members. Uh, people will uh, marry. People will marry this Definition. year, for crying out loud. Uh, this year, uh, people will, um, will, will have children. People uh, will I'll, have children. They will. I already have hundreds of them pregnant, by the way. So that's not prophecy. Mm -hmm. That's almost natural prediction that people know occurs every year. Mm -hmm. But if you will prophesy, you should say, July 7th, 2020, a calamity will befall someone in the north. The man is big and he will fall and he will die. That is a prophecy. People will say July 7th and it must occur on the 7th of July, 6th or 7th or 8th. Then they will know that is with accuracy and precision. Or a disaster will befall the land by December. Let us pray in this country that December, a disaster from the south and east, southeast part of the country, I see it. Mm -hmm. That is a prophecy. That has accuracy, that has a uh, tandem, that has a location, it has ingredients and substance. They say, wow, it helps us to pray. Now we can pray to avert it, but most often, you know, if God speaks to God, God will do it. Then I'm going to ask, sir, because the truth about it is that we've seen people that really are not from God. I don't know if it's what we'll call a familiar spirit. They'll tell you, there's a man here, he has, your name is this, you have this, and they're right. They didn't know you from Adam, and that makes the person think Great. that... Is this man right? Is there really a spirit of prophecy? So, what, how do, because that happens a lot in the churches, and they'll say, so give me a hundred thousand, give me, and that is where they move from that to getting to ask for money or asking you to do something. And because you think they are telling you things about you that they could never have known in any way, then people begin to fall into the, you know, the hands of false prophets, if we could say in that well, way. That one is easier, because that's called divination in scriptures divination or to divine, to use um, spiritual... Familiar spirits? Yeah, familiar spirit, exactly. Otherwise it's called familiar spirit. That same divination, familiar spirit, to see into you and tell you uh, some things about you that you don't know I would know, mm -hmm. so you'd be shocked. And how do I know? Mm -hmm. Now listen to me. I've not prophesied. Mm, okay. Prophecy is predicting the future or revealing the future, not predicting, revealing the future. I've not said anything about your future. future. I've only spoken about your present. Yes. Oh, this is who you are. Oh, you read this course. Oh, you're married. I know. So I, you will see everything they say when you do familiar spirit is about who you are. Right now. Right, right now. The right present, now. not the future. That's a key thing for now, people. That's part of word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Don't forget, we have three gifts that are sister gifts. Mm. Prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. So they are all part of those sister gifts. So when some people operate... Listen to me, for every gift of God, there's a counterfeit that mm -hmm. the devil uses. There's fake miracles, there's fake tongues, there's fake faith, there's fake word of knowledge. That's what familiar spirit is all about. Remember that woman, that, that young lady, that, that damsel in Acts 16? Yes. That saw Pete, Paul. And, and when Paul came to this man, the men, he said, men from God. these are men of God, okay? They came to tell us the way of God, okay? Did you notice she didn't say anything about the future? She simply said, this is who you, exactly. And so Paul himself was initially carried away and said, wait a minute, this is great. He said, this is not from God. This must be a familiar spirit. And, and Paul said, I rebuke your spirit. Get out of her. Mm -hmm. So there was a demon spirit in her that knew who Paul was. Of course, they said later on in Acts 17, 19, Paul, we know Jesus, Jesus we, we know. know. So <laughs> exactly, so they just confirming that they know you, they know me. Okay. It's, it's not a big deal. So what has happened in church is we get, we get shocked that someone could tell us our names. Yes. And, and, and most people that even operate that are fake pastors today. Uh, because demons, as real as angels, are real. And so demons know you, angels know you. Mm -hmm. Angels are assigned to keep you, demons are assigned to attack you. So demons know your house address. And so it's not a big deal. Someone says, uh, you, you make us at least so. So we shouldn't be moved. I'm not moved. So what? So that, that just tells me that they know me in the realm of the spirit. Because it's a realm of the spirit. They know me there, so what's the big deal? I will be moved if you can tell me the future. What is going to happen in the because future? Because the devil, listen to me, the devil does not know the future. Only God knows, knows the, the future. future. And That's why the devil cannot prophesy. He cannot. He cannot tell us what will happen in 20 years, 10 years from now. He's almost also working in time. But God is not in time. Time is in God. That's why the uh, Bible says, had they known they would, would not, not have, have crucified, crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't glory. know that what they were doing was going to make him the Lord of glory and the King of kings. They didn't know that. All right. I'm sure we've been enjoying ourselves and we've been learning a lot. Uh, we are looking, for, looking forward to having your questions. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of things on your mind. So there's room for us to ask questions. The man of God is willing and 
definitely very able to answer all the questions that are on our minds. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, sir, if you feel you have a gift of prophecy, because you can remember when Timothy, um, Paul said to Timothy, he said, you should stir up the gift of prophecy yeah. that was... So, can you stir it up? Oh, yes. You can stir up the gift of God that is in you. Many ways, if, when you're gifted, you're gifted. When God deposits his gifts and gifts into you, it means he has anointed you to function in certain gifts. Now, those gifts can lie dormant in you. They can be there dormant, nothing happening. And you can stir them up through um, worship, through spiritual exercise. I'm saying exercise thyself rather unto godliness, through prayers, through spiritual activities. That's how you can stir up the gift of God that is in you. Um, gift of prayers, gift of prophecy, gift of word of knowledge. If you don't have spiritual activities, it won't happen, it won't, it won't function. Mm -hmm. But for the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, Romans 11, 29. So they are there. Okay. You're gifted, you have the gift of healings. But if you don't pray for the sake, you, they, they won't you get healed.